My next guest, he's a professional mixed martial artist with a record of 15 wins with two losses. He's finished 14 out of his 15 fights and is coming off a win over Victor Pesta, where he clinched the number one seed under the PFL banner under the light heavyweight uh, tournament bracket. Please welcome back onto the show, Rob Wilkinson. How you doing, Rob? I'm um, good, thank you. How you doing? Doing great, man. Uh, thank you for coming back on. That's what good. Hopefully I did you some justice there with that introduction there. You did, you did. <laughs> oh, Rob, I mean, uh, I'd like to say, uh, you know, I don't want to say what's going on in your mind, but I'd like to say so far the year's gone well for you. Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, yeah, so far, but, you know, we're only halfway yeah. halfway through the year of my goals. So there's still two more fights that are coming up. And, yeah, I'm not, not getting carried away yet. Okay. Now, that, 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 that is fair. You know, you are coming off a first-round finish over uh, Victor Pesta. Um, how have you been since that win, man? I've been good. I mean, um, I've been very happy. I was happy with how I performed. Yeah. Obviously happy with the result. Um, but I was really happy with how I felt out there and how I performed like a lot mentally as well. Um, you know, I felt calm, composed out there. My first fight, I know I got the win, but I didn't feel like I performed uh as to my best kind of thing. Like I felt a bit rushed out there. I hadn't fought for over a year in MMA. I was fighting in a big promotion again. So I had kind of that adrenaline dump where this second fight, I really felt like I was kind of starting to show what I'm really capable of and perform how I should be performing. So that's what I kept, want to keep working on is just like being the best me out there. Well, you're certainly, uh, it looks like you're definitely getting your, your groove and your rhythm there, Rob. Um, the results are, you know, really showing out there. You know, this is going to be, you're talking about, you know, it, the first fight of the season, right? You it'd been over a year since you competed. Um, for you though, now third fight though within about a four or five month uh, span there, man. How insane is that for you right now? It is. Um, it's pretty crazy, especially considering my past. You know, my whole career, I've struggled to get have that competition, have the regular fights, um, and that's what I've wanted for a long time. Especially, you know, since I was released from the UFC, I was really struggling to get any. Um, uh just yeah get going kind of sense like people wouldn't fight me i was taking other fights kickboxing fights boxing fights um and i just wanted to be active and that's what i've been i was saying that on my social media for a long time like i just want to be active yeah. because this is what i love to do and that's how i can show how good i am and obviously the more active you are the more fights you ha have regularly it makes it a lot easier than if you're only fighting once a year um so having you know i was in a tournament when I early on about eight years ago in my career, I had three fights in a year. Yeah. And I felt really good doing that. So it's awesome to be able to go back to back to back uh, with, with the fights. And as I said, my last fight, I felt so much more composed out there and much more and was able to show more of what I'm capable of. So I'm really looking forward to kind of keep going with this rhythm. Yeah. Now, looking at your career, Rob, you know, it's easy to say that from, if, at least uh, through my, my personal opinion here that, you're one of the best. You're you're one of the best on the planet. You're an, an extremely well fighter. You know, you're 15 and two. You've done a lot of, from what I've seen with your body of work. It, it looks great out there. Now, though, this is the third time. You're no uh, stranger to having, you know, three fights within the year. This is your fastest turnaround. Because uh, when we look at it before, I see that you've had three fights in about a six, seven month span out there. That's probably like the, the next biggest one there. Is it different though, since you're preparing for the PFL format though, Rob? versus that earlier time in your career? A hundred percent back-to-back fights, you know, like yeah. there's only seven weeks between my last fight and this fight. Yeah. Uh, obviously uh, it was good. I got a first round finish um, and so did my opponent. So, you know, we're probably not too banged up, but it's more the toll of training mentally and physically and just making sure I'm working with that. Uh, as you were talking about my last tournament when I fought three times, I think it was yeah. over. I don't know, eight to 10 months or whatever it was, but, yeah. you know, having a good 10, 12 weeks off, like between fights. So you have plenty of time to have a little bit of rest or, you know, mentally check out and then get back into like an eight week camp where this is just straight back into it. Um, knowing that and knowing that, you know, I found out that I was in the PFL at the end of last year and I've been training for that ever since pretty hard that I know I'm ready. I know I'm in fight shape. I know I keep improving every fight camp but knowing that I need to kind of focus on my recovery as much as my training and making sure I'm not going there overtrained or burnt out or injured because, you know, that's 
that's the main thing. Like I know I'm fight ready. I just fought seven weeks ago. I just fought eight weeks before that as well. Um, so just making sure I'm focusing a lot on my recovery and doing those sort of things for myself as well. And for a lot of the people that do not understand Rob, you know, the, the kind of lifestyle that you have to live as a fighter, because some people will say, oh, well, I mean, he just went there. He didn't really get hurt. He finished the guy fast, you know, oh, well, you know what? He's fine then, right? I mean, recovery is so important because of what you're doing outside of the fight, right? People don't see everything that it takes for you to get fight ready, right? Oh, 100%. And even, even if you go and get an early finish, people don't know. <laughs> Those are nice, though punching someone kicking okay. someone like my yeah like i've had little injuries throughout this uh tournament already like even if you get a early first round finish or second round finish you know okay. um it doesn't take much for in a fight when everything is 100 percent and you're throwing everything as 100 percent hard you're hitting bone and bone or whatever to get hurt or get little niggles and then actually be like you know even if it's a quick win to need some time to recover and then on top of that obviously all your hard training as well now, you know, for you, Rob, you know, you're doing really good um, when it comes to getting things you're getting out there. You don't get paid by the hour. You get your finishes. Does it um, I mean, does the kind of mentality or does the pressure kind of come off since you're already in the final four? And really, I mean, it's just a matter of you winning and you're moving on to the championship. Uh, does that kind of like is there like less stress there knowing that there's no point system there now? Uh, not really. I never even with the point system, I know it. I know I finished in the number one seed from getting those points, but that's just me fighting naturally. Like, as you said, you uh, mentioned my record at the start out of my 15 wins, 14 finishes. The only one I didn't finish was in a, was in a ring. And that was the reason I, if it was in a cage, I believe I would have got the finish, but he kept wiggling under the ropes and it was pretty annoying fighting in a, like a kickboxing ring. Yeah. Um, so I'm not, I've never had pressure, even those two fights to try and finish it early or anything. I just kind of fight how I fight and I'm pretty good at putting them away early when I see their hurt or if I see an opportunity to jump on it, I kind of jump on it. So, you know, it doesn't take away pressure. I still need to get the win and that's what I'll be looking to do to move on. Uh, your, uh, your opponent, uh, Dylan Monte, you know, he's, uh, he's coming off another uh, first round finish himself there. Uh, you're only as good as your last fight. It doesn't matter. MMA can be tricky, right? It doesn't matter. One day you're on top of the world. The next day you, you can lose. Dylan, you know, lost within, you know, under a minute against uh, the champ, the, the current champ, Antonio Carlos Jr. And then he got a first round finish there. I mean, how, what's your thought process going into that? Did you like that matchup for yourself? Um, did it really not even matter who you were going to fight, uh, Rob? Uh, I like the matchup. Obviously, I don't get to choose it, and uh, so I don't really mind um, yeah. what was going to happen. But, uh, you know, he got a really impressive first-round finish, nice and quick, uh, to steal that fourth-round position, obviously coming off that loss. Um, but, yeah, I think he's talented. He, you know, he's got decent boxing. He's very aggressive. He kind of kind of pushes the pace and tries to just, like, break people, and I think that's the way he tries to win most of his fights. Uh, I think I heard him say he's got the heaviest hands in the division. So I'm looking forward to proving him wrong with that. And um, you know, I believe I'm the best boxer in the division and I'm going to show him that next Friday. Now, you know, for you, you know, you're a professional. Um, did you take much off uh, of, of the la that uh, first loss that he had? Uh, no, I was actually watched that a few times and he was doing well. Yeah, I know. It's hard to say that in a 28 second fight or whatever, yeah. but you know, he came out, he landed a good jab, he landed his overhand right. He got um, Antonio kind of backing up and looked like maybe even a bit like, oh shit, you know, he's yeah. hit me a couple times already. As I said, he comes out hard and aggressive straight away in all of his fights. Uh, and then obviously he, he kind of made the mistake. He got taken down and he, he got put in that choke, but against a very high level jujitsu guy. Um, yeah, that's what it was. And then he obviously rebounded he came from sitting at the bottom of the ladder and getting sneaking into that fourth round position so it's good on him yeah oh uh, you know for for you rob you're coming off the, the two finishes i mean is it hard though again you're professional is it hard to not get a little confident and be like yeah i'm pretty damn good at, at what i'm doing here i mean is is, is it hard because i know a lot of people they do something right they get a little overconfident in your field rob how does that work for you man uh there's definitely nothing wrong with being confident i was okay. confident coming into this uh, i guess being cocky might be a different uh okay different thing um 
you know, I believe that was the number one going into this division. I, I thought I'm going to win this tournament. That's what I'm set out to do. That's what I'm kind of saying. Like, I'm not, I'm not celebrating now. I'm not happy, you know, super happy that I've won two fights. You know, I've got a, my goal is to win all four fights and win them impressively. So, you know, I've got two more fights. Yes, I'm confident. Yes, I'm confident I can put Dylan away. Yes, I'm confident I can put whoever else I get in the final away. Um, but I'm not cocky. I'm still training my ass off. I'm still working towards that. I know that that doesn't come uh, come easily. And I know I can't just kind of cruise on to winning a world title. I have to be working. And, you know, I've been living in America and just my whole life's been just, you know, training, recovering, and repeat, you know. Any thoughts on the o Omari and Joshua Berea fight? Uh, it's interesting. I'm kind of upset that uh, Antonio is out, as I would have loved to fight him in the final, seeing as he's the champ from last year. It's always kind of, I don't know, I personally want to beat the champ to kind of become the champ, so I would have loved to have him as a matchup. Um, you know, all three of those guys are from the same gym, which I don't really understand. <laughs> I've never been to a gym where I would wow. fight. Yeah, exactly. I've never been to a gym where I would like be fighting someone from my own gym. You know, that doesn't seem like much of a team atmosphere. And I really like having a good team around me. So um, I think it's pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, I really don't know. I thought Amari, I think I just saw the odds um, and I was surprised Josh was the favorite. I thought Amari, yes. his experience, um, I thought, you know, he's had so many fights in the UFC, so many fights generally. Uh, and he's had two very impressive wins. I thought he might be the favorite, but I think there's a lot of hype around Josh. So he's young, he's up and coming, he's undefeated. So I guess that's kind of taken it. But yeah, it's an interesting fight. I'm not sure how it's going to go. So very interesting. It is very interesting that Amari was 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 a dog there for any betters out there. I did see the odds there. Um, yeah. You know, what's, what's funny with what you said, um, I was watching this video from American Top Team and they showed Omari on one side of the, it's a huge facility. Yeah, and then so they show Josh on the other side over there, man. Uh, so it, yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty wild that three of those guys were were in the light heavyweights and they're training together. It's crazy, right? It is, yeah. Now, now for you, Rob, as we're nearing the end of this, man, you know, you as you're fighting, you know, you're from Australia, correct? Yes. You're here now. You're living here. You're training here uh, for the time being, man. How has uh, the U.S. treated you, man? How, how are you, you like the experiences here? How do you like the, the nature here? Because you seem like an outdoorsy kind of a person. I am an outdoorsy. Not stupid outdoorsy, but I like to just, you know, get out. Like, we like go. to go out there and, and you, you see some sights. You like to hike, right? Yeah, definitely. I like going for walks or hikes. And, you know, I do when I can, like back home, like going camping and stuff like that. But, um, you know, that's why I thought Denver was going to be a good fit for me. Uh, the gym's awesome. Everyone in Denver is super friendly. So, you know. I haven't had any problems with that. Obviously, I uh, still miss home, miss my family and friends and then all my loved ones back home, but it's uh, it's been good here, yeah. How oh, have you liked the food? Uh, the, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit of hit and miss, I think. Denver has yeah. got better food than other places. I think you guys have got a lot of good like, junk food. but um, Yeah, but I don't know if that's exactly a good thing or yeah, a yeah, bad exactly. thing. Uh, I do like all the Mexican food, though. I'm eating heaps of tacos and that, uh, yeah, just generally Mexican food. Uh, we don't have, we have that, but nowhere near as much and not as good uh, back home. So that's probably the biggest favorite of you. You got to try some, some birra tacos. Some which tacos? Birra tacos. Tacos, yeah. It's like, uh, they're like tortillas, like dipped in a sauce with Ooh, like yeah. shredded meat and cheese. That sounds, that sounds pretty good. I might have to get that. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Now, uh, last thing is, just so people can know, you know, who Rob Wilkinson is as a fighter, man, personally, though, I mean, what kind of music do you like to listen to, Rob? I mean, whenever you're working out at the gym, uh, do you listen to music at all? Yeah, I like to listen to a lot of, uh, like, rap. Not, like, super aggressive or anything, but just, like, something with a good beat. Um, and then I also like, I don't know, like, Flume Rufus. Uh, my walkout song is going to be from Fred again, who's just, like, a, a UK DJ. Um I listen to a bit of everything. I like listening to this, like chilled, you know, singing guitar kind of play like at night time or something relaxing. But um, yeah, I'm pretty open to music. I listen to it a fair bit. What is your ideal uh, day off for, for you, Rob? Whenever you're not at the gym, whenever you just want to relax, get away from the world, what's your ideal thing? Uh, well, it depends on the weather. If it's a pretty nice day. I wouldn't mind going like out for a walk. I do that quite a lot on a Sunday, like my day off. 
go out, you know, maybe back home, I go for a swim at the beach, but it depends what there is, maybe a swim in the lake, um, just kind of chill or also depending on how tired you are or if it's a shitty day, I don't mind just crashing by the couch and watching TV and movies all day and doing sweet fuck all. There you go. You got to get catch that squid game, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, uh, Rob, uh, you know, August 5th is your fight against Dylan Monte. To anyone out there that has yet to see you perform or to anyone out there that can't wait to watch you perform, what do you have to tell the audiences? I mean, as we were talking about, I've got 14 out of my 15 finishes. He's finished every one of his fights. So I uh, expect fireworks. I think he's going to come out hot and hard, and I think I'm going to put him away early. Rob, is there anything you want to let the audience know before we sign off? Just make sure you tune in on August 5th and watch me, you know, fulfill my dreams and go on to the final to become the PFL world champ. That is Rob Wilkinson, ladies and gentlemen. Rob, thank you so much. No worries, bud.